And uh, our next talk is going to be about using containers. Um, and this uh, is going to be one of our postdocs, Madan, um, talking about using containers to do checkpoint restarting uh, in jobs. Great. So yeah, take it away, Madan. All right. All right. Thank you. I hope everybody can see my slide now. First of all, first of all I, I would like to apologize uh, because... Just wait a moment. You're still loading on our side. Oh. Do you want to try sharing again? Uh, let me try. Yeah, something. Maybe didn't accept the recording or something like that. Maybe. Do you want to make sure that you've accepted the recording up at the top? Um, I think so. Let me try again. Okay, there we go. We can see him now. Thanks. All right. Yeah. Thank you. All right. First of all, I like I would like to apologize. I was planning to be on site today, but uh, something happened at last hour, so I will be on site tomorrow. All right. So my name is Madan Timulsina. I'm Nisha postdoc at Data and AI Service Group. So today I'm going to talk about checkpointing and restarting the job with the DMTCP inside the container. Uh, let me know if I see. Okay. So these are the outline of my talk. So I will start with the introduction. That means what uh, what is the checkpointing and what is restarting. And then there will be some overview about the DMTCP, which is distributed multi-threaded checkpointing. And then I will talk about how checkpointing and restarting job works using DMTCP inside the container on Parameter. Then there will be some conclusion slide. Then let's start with the introduction. So then what is checkpointing? So checkpointing is the process that involves preserving the current state of running process or running job by creating the image file in the form of checkpoint image file. What that means is that file include capturing the memory, IO status, executing instruction or other related data of the running process into the file, which is in the form of checkpoint image file. Then restarting is the process that uses the checkpoint image file that we just produced during the checkpointing, which resume its execution from where it was saved. So rather than starting from beginning or from the scratch, it will just use the state of uh, you know uh, application or job from the last save state, which can save the cost and time of the resource you are using. So this operation, sorry, this operation can be continued either on same computer or different a different computer, with the hope of without any interruption. So it's a crucial capability in high performance computing due to complex and time consuming computation. It can reduce startup time in application and facilitate batch scheduler optimization, including preemption. Then I have highlighted some of the benefits of the checkpointing and restart. So there are like few benefits. I, I, I categorize in the two different perspectives. So one is a nurse perspectives and other is user perspectives. So in the nurse perspectives, so like it, it will enhance the job prioritization. And what that means if, if you have more, you know, critical or urgent time sensitive tasks, so it will give more priority for that type of job by preempting the less critical jobs. So which is similar to the, letting pass the ambulance in the traffic, you know, which is more critical. And then it will optimize the node utilization. So by using checkpointing and restart, it the node will be, you know, used in the most efficient way, which can maximize the node uses by efficiently backfiling uh, like a small job, especially around the large user version, which will enhance the node utilizations and overall throughput. So it will own interpreted operation. Like if sometimes there is system maintenance is ongoing, so we can just run the checkpointing of all the jobs, then we can save the checkpoint image file, and then we can restart the job once the system is back online with the minimal disruption. And it will be also like enhanced reliability. That means if there is some expected or unexpected power outage is ongoing, we, we, we can potentially checkpointing all the job before that. And then we can recovery or restart our job once the system is stable or power is back. So in user perspective, so it can extend runtime. So allow jobs to exceed wall time limit by 
resuming from checkpoints. That means let's say if you submit the job for one hour, then your job is killed by the time limit. Then if you have like, if you use the checkpoint and restarting process, it will automatically submit the job for the remaining time and it will run until your job is complete. So it increased throughput. So by leveraging the gap in the SROM schedule to optimize the job processing. So for example, if you have like large uh, job, like, I mean, if the some job that takes like more time. So let's say if you take like six hour job, then you can just break into different, uh, break into different part, like uh, two hours job or something like that. So that you can, uh, you you don't, you just not, you, sorry, you don't need to wait longer to submit the job or to schedule your job by the batch. So your job will be submitted, uh, you know, um, based on the your wall time limit. And then it will be run automatically until your job is finished. And it also extended interactively. Sometimes I have, uh, you know, I have some also, I have also some experience that during my graduate study, so some of the job we run interactively and we continuously monitoring the output. So if you are running your job interactively, and then if it's time to, you know, time for dinner or time for lunch, or you have to go somewhere, then you can just perform the checkpointing, save image file, and then you can restart the job in your convenience time. So it is also helpful for debugging. So if you identify too many warnings or error, you can just pause your job, save a checkpoint image file, specify or identify the, your error, and then you can just restart the job after that. All right. But there are, there are a few challenges in the checkpointing and restarting. So it is complicity for user transparency. So it requires extensive effort to create a seamless experience for user during checkpointing and restarting the process. And it also has like some MPI support challenges, particularly difficult due to the combination of various MPI implications and networks, resulting in the need of multiple versions like M times N problems. But we have one tools like DMTCP, which serve as the solution for overcoming these challenges. Then what is DMTCP? So like this is distributed multi-threaded checkpointing. I have uh, linked some sources of like NOS documentation and DMTCP website, their course for the people who are interested to look at more. So what is DMC DMTCP? Basically, this is just like simplifying check checkpoint and restarting tools. So this is open source tools offering seamless checkpoint and restarting functionalities for distributed application across the cluster, grid, cloud environment, and so on. So it preserves the application state seamlessly. So it means like no code or kernel modification is needed. So it store complex threaded or distributed application without altering their code or Linux kernel. It is accessible to users, so don't require a special system privilege. It's allow operation without root privilege. So it is user-friendly process, like checkpointing is the user-friendly process. So it performs checkpoint without changing user code or system settings. So if you are using any, any environment or if you are, you are using any your software package, it doesn't change on that side. It just, you know, save the, the current state of your uh, job or its current state of your um, uh, operation. And it is also versatile application support. So it works with diverse applications like MPI, OpenMP, MATLAB, Python, C, C++, Proton, Celescript, SROM, or any other resource manager. Then how does DMTCP work? So I have put like simple cartoon showing on the left-hand side, so um, which like DMTCP architecture. So here we can see that the DMTCP coordinator at the top and then there are two user processes. Then each user processes has their own thread. And out of like many thread, there is one checkpoint thread, which is connected to the DMTCP. So any message through the DMTCP coordinator, like in the form of checkpoint passes, will be received by the checkpoint thread. And then this, this will be, uh, this signal will be triggered to the different threads and which initiate the basis for the checkpointing. And checkpointing, uh, you know, uh, process is performed there. And then these two user processes are connected through the socket connection. 
So one DM TCP coordinator manages one DM one checkpoint table DM TCP computation. Multiple coordinator can handle separate computation, each independently checkpointable. Only one of the DM, DM TCP checkpoint thread or user thread can be active at any time, not both concurrently. No single point of failure if checkpoint images are back up. Even if the coordinator fails, the system can restart from the last checkpoint. Run library are saved as the part of memory image, so application continue using the same library API. So Linux environment variable are part of memory MS. Special DMTCP plugin needed to modify save environment variable during the checkpoint. So entire process operates in the user space, so no need for administrative privilege for the functioning. For the restart, the process is similar, but you know, same as the checkpointing, but it is in the opposite order. So we have conducted different tests across the multiple version of Zenfo and variety of simulation. So we choose Zenfo because it is like crucial tool for the high energy physics resource and has been thoroughly tested and has passed all the assessment. And we perform the test using Shifter and Portman HPC container images. And we're planning to extend our research into additional fields such as material science with ongoing test using CP2K. Okay, so then how can we use the checkpoint restart job inside the container using DMTCP? So we just have the talk from the Adams about the NOS resources about the different container like Shifter and Portman SPC. So we have tested with, you know, both of these type of container. But before we see it like uh, the, the example code or how it works, so there will be some requirements. So. So as of now, DMTCP cannot be checkpointed outside the container. So when you build the container, it must be included within the container. So your simulation package can be built in many ways, like during the container build process. So as Adams, uh, uh, you know, uh, in the presentation, in the Adams presentation, we see that we can build our container using the Portman SPC. So you can build your software package along with your container, including DMTCP on it. Or you can, if you have some existing container with the DMTCP on it, then you can link your source code uh, somewhere outside and build your um, you know, uh, software package inside the container. Or in some cases, like you can extend the functionality by building on the top of existing container. For example, when I was using CP2K, so they have their uh, container, existing container. So then I just use the their use their container and then I just, you know, they had DMTCP on it. There is like example code, you know, example script of that one. So we just need the minimal modification over there. We can just use the existing container on the top of, you know, mm -hmm. uh, on the top of like uh, DMTCP. So all method has been tested and verified here. So in the context of Zenfo, various version can be directly sourced from the CBMFS, facilitating easy access to multiple version for testing and de development. Then how does automatic resubmission of job works? So like when, first, first of all, users submit their job incorporating DMTCP within the container along with necessary software package like Zenfo CP2K. And our Teller script is used to manage checkpoint restart tasks, which isn't directly feasible within the container environment. The script initiates checkpointing through restart job function, including a start coordinator to initiate the job and execute its executes using DMTCP launch, ensuring efficient job lifecycle management. Upon receiving the terminate signal, the setup facilitated checkpointing, ensuring continuous job execution and effective resource utilization. This method ensures effective, sorry, efficient handling of checkpoint restart process, aligning with the specific need of SPC environment, leading to the successful completion of job. So I have put some sample script over here. So at the top, which is like basic slum directives, which you know, also like uh, highlighted by the Adams in the pre, uh, in the last talk. 
So these are just the basic, basic, you know, slum direct directives to submit the job. But just before there, here we can see that like these are the new SPS command for to use the checkpoint restart job with the DMTCP. So most of them are, you know, clear by the name, like time minimum is the minimum time allocation. Some some as best command like comment, which is used to specify the desired wall time and to track the remaining wall time for the job after the pre-termination. And there is some module we can specify. And then there is like, we just export the host name to restart the job, like from that host name. And then there is the function, like simple function we define to requeue which is a requeue function, which helps to resubmit re the job. And then after that, it's trapped the signal to trigger the requeue function. And then this is the basically the, the container command or the shifter. We, we are using the shifter here, which launches the job within the shifter container. And here in the previous slide, we can see that we use the, like, for example, or the batch script, which is test, you know, iPhone auto, dot ss file and then this is how it looks like so this is the one taylor script uh, we have like designed to set up the dmtcp environment within the uh, dmtcp environment using the uh, checkpointing and restarting in addition this script provides the function for managing and monitoring the slum job including time tracking signal trapping job requeuing and integration with the DMTCP for checkpoint and restart functionalities. It converts time to human readable format, calculates re remaining time for the job scheduling, updates job comments accordingly, and manage job requeuing based on the remaining time. And there is like another function. This function set up and manage the job using the DMTCP for checkpointing. It start the job if it is initial run or restart it from the checkpointing if it's a subsequent run. Additionally, it configures or trap to automatically checkpoint the job when termination signal is received. And here, like one of the batch script, I just listed as my, you know, underscore gen for dot ss, which is your simulation code. And then I have put some sample code in the backup slide here as well. So this, like, this is the place where your simulation code will go. And then use, you can specify the, checkpoint interval with the, the you know minus i option here so if you want to checkpoint your job let's say here i'm just doing for the every 5 minutes but you can specify your time in second like in or half an hour or an hour or something like that so this is the same you know uh, script but uh, i was using the shifter before but here i just use the portman spc i just replaced the container part of command here with the portman spc and there is also some permission um, problem using the Portman HPC. So I just use this command, which this, you know, the significant modification have been implemented to change from the shifter image script to, uh, you know, uh, to compatible with the Portman HPC script. Okay, so in conclusion, so the study shows the effectiveness of checkpoint restart technique using the DMTCP in high performance computing. So we demonstrated utility across the HPC platform, including container technology like Sifter and Portman HPC. This method is particularly valuable in complex lengthy HPC computation, significantly reducing time and cost associated with the process restart. Implication in diverse simulation, including high energy physics, medical science, uh, material science, like test is ongoing with the CP2K, showcasing the versatility. Partiality. Highlight a critical advancement of advancement in efficient and reliable computational method methodologies. Confirm the effectiveness of the technique and open new opportunity in the computational science. So with this, I would like to thank. Thank you all for listening. And I will I will also like to thank you for helping this work, like Nick Tyler, Lisa, UNS, and Will. And if you have any question or if you want to try with your software, just feel free to reach out to me in office hour or any any uh, you know any other times. I'm happy to you know work or try with your software. Thank you. Okay, great. Let's thank our speaker.
So are there any questions online at the moment or questions in the room? All right, that's okay. We also have the doc. So please, if you do have any questions about this, please feel free to, to ask your questions in the doc. Um, at the moment, we're gonna go take a break uh, in the room and we'll be back at uh, 1030 with some more talks. I think our next talk uh, after the break is going to be about storage systems and what storage to choose.